Hi everyone, well here I am on your video screen, not in person, but one day, hopefully soon, we'll get together again. You know whenever I like to uh, speak to you, take one of your assemblies, uh, I like to use my sketchboard and I like to tell you stories from the Bible, especially about Jesus, but stories from the Bible. And this time I'm going to do that. But before I start my story, I want to ask you a question. And you've really got to think about this because it's an important question and it's a big question. Now, I don't know if you recognise this up here. That is... It's so new that uh, you might not have even heard of it yet, but it's coming out. It's an Xbox Series X. Now, I'm not an expert on these things, but... It might just about coming out, or you might have one already, or you might be getting one for Christmas. I don't know, of course. But imagine if you had one. One of the latest controllers, one of the latest game consoles. Wonderful, the buttons there. Imagine if your friend, let's, uh, let's call her Freya, if she came to you one day and she said, Dear, here, do you, I know you've got one of those new Xbox Series X. Can I, I haven't got one. Can I lend? Sure, you say. Yeah. And you, you unplug it from your computer or your screen or television. And you wrap it up and you, you give her the box and you give her the controller and you give her the games and she takes it away happy. Maybe next day, uh, another friend, a different friend, maybe let's call him uh, Ibrahim. He comes and he says, here, can I, uh, can I lend you a blue pencil? And you say, sure. And you go to your pencil case and give him the blue pencil. Now, imagine if... Half an hour later, one hour later, it doesn't matter. This happens. Ibrahim comes back, Ibrahim comes back and he says, I'm really sorry, but I broke your pencil. I broke the tip. And you say, well, don't worry. It's okay, relax, forget it. Imagine if you go home that day, and then there's a knock on your door and Freya's there and she's looking very unhappy and uh, she says um, you know you lent me your uh, your Xbox Series X uh, yeah well I was going to give it back to you today but when I when I, I come out my, my my flat and I put it on the sort of the edge of the landing you know I live on the eighth floor and uh, I put it on the edge, just, just for there, just so I could close the door, but the wind blew it, and it blew it over the landing, and it landed eight floors down. And now I'm afraid it's not an Xbox Series X, it's just... It's an X box. It's not a box anymore. It's 200 pieces of plastic. Here it is. I'm really sorry. Imagine if that happened and you said to her, it's okay. Forget it. Now, which one of your two friends do you think? Ibrahim, Ibrahim who broke the pencil. Freya, who broke your Xbox. Which one of them would be more grateful, more happy, more relieved? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? It'd be Freya. She done the most damage. And you said to her, it's okay. Man, she's the most relieved. In Jesus, when Jesus was on earth, in Jesus' time, people used to love being around him. And it tells in the, in the, in the Bible, it's a true story of a man called Simon, who wanted Jesus to come to this. If I've spelt that right, it should say party. He wanted Jesus to come to a party. 
be wonderful, wasn't it? I know these days at the moment, all the different things we have to do and, and, and rules we have to keep, it's a bit difficult, even impossible to have a party. Anyway, in those days, you wanted Jesus to come to a party. Now this man, Simon, maybe you've heard of these people, or maybe you haven't, but it doesn't matter. This man, Simon, was someone called a Pharisee. You have to remember that word, but it helps you when you understand things. He was a Pharisee. And what that meant was that Simon was someone who kept the rules. Now, of course, it's important to keep rules, and it's good to keep the rules. And even more so today, we've got to keep the rules, wash our hands, and keep distance, and keep in our bubbles. and what. It's really important to keep the rules. So I'm not saying don't keep the rules, except this man, Simon, he can, didn't keep the rules because of COVID or things like that. He kept the rules because he thought, you know what? If I keep the rules, God has got to be kind to me. He's got to. God has got to forgive me for all the wrong things I've done. If I keep the rules, it sort of pays God off. Hmm. That type of thinking never works. But that's what he thought. So there was a big list of things that he didn't do, or he didn't go there, or he didn't eat this, and there was another list of things that he did do. He always did this, and he always did that, and he did that two or three times a week, and he kept the rules, kept the rules, kept the rules. Tick, tick, tick. He invited Jesus to a party. Look at his party. There's a bottle of wine there, because that's what they drank in those days. Uh, there's some bread. I suppose they, they ate bread there. Look, there's some. Look, there's some. There's some jelly. Look, watch it wobble. <laughs> I like jelly that wobbles. I'm sure they didn't have jelly in those days, but I couldn't think of anything else to paint. And there's some grapes. And there they are at the party at the table. And there's a window looking out to the countryside. And uh, Jesus went to the party. Now, in those days, when you went to a party when you were the guest, when you went to the party, when you got there, the person who invited you was supposed to be so happy to see you that they, well, like when someone comes to your house, I know before, before things change, but when people come to your house in the future and they're gonna come again, aren't they? When people come to your house, you'd be happy to see them. You might take their coat off and, and, and lead them into, into your living room or in the room where you, where you sit. And if it's cold, you put them by the fire. And you want a drink, you want, to, want something to eat. You'd be all happy to see them. Well, in those days, you did similar things like that. But in those days, because people used to walk along the road rather than driving cars, because people used to walk along the road and the roads were a bit muddy, and between you and me, there's quite a few animals around and animals used to do what animals do in the street, you know what I mean? And people used to just walk in bare feet or sandals and, and squashing the mud and squashing other things. One of the big things you should do for someone when they come to your house is to wash their feet. If you're really rich, you might get your servant to wash their feet, but that's like a bit distant. Really what you want to do to show how much you happy they're there is you would wash their feet. And you put some perfume on their feet and you put some perfume on their clothes because they might be sweaty and you know you didn't want them to smell for the other guests so you put some perfume on their clothes and you might give them some water to wash their face and hands and things we're going to learn that simon he didn't do any of that for jesus also in those days what we need to know is something a bit strange. And if I was with you in the same room, I would, I would show you by lying on one of your desks. Because in those days, people used to, didn't sit down like we do for parties, or they didn't even really sort of stand around. They used to lie down. They'd lie down at the table. Now, I, don't, I wouldn't fancy it myself. I don't know what you think about it. But they would sort of lie down, or prop up on their elbow, lie down, and they'd reach for the food like this. And that was another reason, good reason to wash your feet, because your feet were then up. A bit more air, a bit more smell. So Jesus, it says, went to the party and he was reclining or lying down at the table. Now here he is. I haven't drawn all of him. You have to imagine. There's the end of my picture and there's Jesus, there's, there's his legs. 
and there's his feet and you can't see his body in the table I couldn't, I couldn't draw it so there it is, he's lying there, that's his feet, there's his legs and it says something amazing happened this happened because Again, another sort of rule in those days was that if you were a rich person and you had a party, you had to sort of let the doors open a bit and let the poor people come in. And they weren't, they weren't invited to the party. They couldn't lie down at the table and eat the food. But they were allowed to stand around the edge of the room. And uh, when the servants brought out the food, the leftovers, but the other people at the table didn't want to eat, they would walk past the poor people and the poor people might better pick a bit of chicken bone or something, you know. So poor people were allowed in. Like I said, something interesting, amazing, shocking happened at the party. This happened. What's this? Well, what this is, is he's a very famous lady in that town, Simon's town. She came in. And whereas Simon was a, kept all the rules and everyone looked at Simon and thought, wow, he is a really good, great man god must really love him look at the rules he keeps whereas simon was like that this woman we don't even know her name she'd broken all the rules every one of them broken all the time she wasn't a good woman simon knew that because he knew her from the same town and she did something amazing because what she wanted to do was to come and meet Jesus. You see, what Jesus had been doing, maybe in that town earlier the day, maybe the day before, I don't know, but Jesus had been going around telling people two opposite things. You'll see what I mean. He was telling the people one thing, and it was this. You know what this sign means? I'm sure you do. Hope you can see it. It's a divide sign, isn't it? And Jesus was telling the people, look, I've got to be honest with you, everyone. Because of the way you're living, the things you do and the things you don't do, they don't please God. And that means that you and me, me and you, listening to us, they're divided from God, separated from God. But I said he was telling them equal opposite things because at the same time, Jesus would tell them this, that even though they're divided from God, this is true. That God loved people and God loves us. And this woman, she believed that. And she wanted to come to Jesus and she wanted to say sorry for the wrong things she's done. And she wanted to say, she wanted to say thanks, thank you to Jesus for the wonderful teaching he taught and the wonderful miracles he did. And she was going to say thank you for something even more special in a moment. So the story is that she comes and she doesn't want to make a fuss. She can't speak to Jesus because she's not invited. So she comes up behind Jesus' feet while he's lying down and his head is, and face is facing the table and eating. She comes behind, maybe she wants to do it secretly, I don't know. And it says that she began to cry. She was sad because of the wrong things she's done. And it says her tears dropped down and they fell on Jesus' feet. And maybe she was crying so much they just started to wash the whole of Jesus' feet. And then it says that she got her hair, which was probably tied up in a, in a bun or something, and it says she undone her hair and she used her hair to dry Jesus' feet. And then 
It's like layer upon layer upon layer, isn't it? Her tears are washing Jesus' feet. Her hair is drying Jesus' feet. I couldn't do that, could I? And then it says she done this. She got some really expensive perfume. And she says she broke open the bottle because she, she didn't want to keep any of it. She just broke open the bottle and poured it out onto Jesus' feet. The smell of that beautiful perfume must have just filled the whole party. Everyone would know what she was doing. Meanwhile, Simon, the man who keeps all the rules and wants to please God, he thinks to himself, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> I invited Jesus here because I know there's something special about him. But if he was so special, he would know what type of woman that woman is. She's not a good woman, and he wouldn't get, let her come near him. He, he shouldn't let her touch him. Do you think Jesus knew what type of woman she was? Of course he did. He knows everything. He knows everything about us. Jesus said to Simon, Simon, I want to tell you a story. He said, imagine this, there were two men, and uh, they both owed money to another man. And it came the day that when they had to pay the money back to that man. And they go to the man and one of them, the first one, he owes 50 denarii. Denarii was the sort of the coins in those days. Well, we could say 50 pounds or something, but 50 denarii. And a denarii was a coin that you earned for one day's work. So this man, he owed 50. The other man, he owed 500. Neither of them could pay. They went to the man they owed the money to, and the man they owed the money to, he said, forget it. Forget it. Jesus said to Simon, Simon, which one, do you th which one of those two men do you think are going to be the most grateful? Back to our Xbox and our pencil. Which one of your two friends would be the most grateful? Simon says, well, the one who owed the most, because he, he gets the most relief, he's let off the most. You're right, Simon said Jesus. And you know, even though you're like ticking the rules and keeping the rules and trying to please God, when I came here, you didn't show much care or love for me. You didn't wash my feet, you didn't put perfume on me, you didn't. But since she came, this woman, she hasn't stopped washing my feet, drying my feet, pouring perfume on me, because she knows she's done a lot of things wrong. But she knows also that this is what I'm going to do for her. That's what I'm going to do for her, Simon. I'm going to be very forgiving. And he turned to the woman, Jesus turned to the woman, and imagine this. He said to her, all of the wrong things you've done, all your sin, forgiven. Some people thought, you can't say that. Only God can forgive sin. Jesus knew that, I don't know how long later, maybe some weeks or maybe a bit longer, but Jesus knew that sometime later he was going to break through that divide between us and God when he died on the cross. The Bible says that Jesus is God come to earth. And when he died, he died so that we can be forgiven. That if we come to him and ask him, he will forgive us. So this woman, she says, thanks. 
And Jesus is ever so forgiving. So you can remember those words, as I've come to a stop now, you can remember those words, thanks and forgiving. They're two separate words, but in one way also, in a clever way, they make up a phrase, don't they? Because when you think about, when Christians think about Jesus on the cross, we sort of say to him, Jesus, thanks for giving your life for us. Now, it's not easy to forgive people. I, I don't want to pretend it's easy, it's not. But it's a good thing. So when people do do things that break our staff or things that upset us or things that, you know, it's not easy and it doesn't always come just like that. But it is good for us and for them, for us to be able to try to forgive them. Maybe we need God's help and ask him to help us to forgive. But this woman, she knew that she was forgiven because she knew Jesus and Jesus knew that he was going to die on the cross. He never did anything wrong. So when he died, he took all the punishment of everyone else. Christians believe, and the Bible says that he didn't stay dead. He came alive again. And he's alive today. So we can speak to him. Thank you for listening to my story. And uh, I'm going to pray now. And uh, let's just take a few seconds silence just to pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for your kindness. We thank you that even though we've done wrong, you are a forgiving God. Please help us to learn how to forgive people who've done wrong things against us. It's not easy for us, so will you please help us? Amen. Thank you for listening, and I hope that we'll be together sometime soon, or maybe I can make another video for you sometime.